God, where's the time gone? Oh, wrong side. I don't have a watch here. Hey guys, what's up? It's your man Pete. Just thought I would do a video talking about mortgage rates and what's happening there. Sort of what we're hearing on the streets and how this might affect you as a new home buyer or somebody who's looking to upsize into a larger home. And I know I've talked a lot about it lately on the channel because obviously it's a very important factor. It drives a lot of people into the market and it also sort of shaves some of the demand off the market as well too whenever there's potential interest rate announcement. So it could have some very real ramifications for the housing market here in Toronto and the GTA and of course also to your pocketbooks. So we'll get right into it right after this guys. And so the Bank of Canada decided not to raise interest rates in January 2022 for fear of damaging or hurting the overall economy, which is still sort of struggling to come out of the pandemic. But as economists and financial market analysts and housing pundits follow the Bank of Canada's interest rate announcements, you know, sort of waiting to see what's going to happen next in terms of lending and mortgage rates, sometimes we forget that the banks themselves can actually raise interest rates whenever they want to, without following the Bank of Canada's lead first. And so we're starting to hear that some of the individual individual big banks here in Canada are beginning to raise their interest rates. And it sort of makes me think, hmm, do they know something already that we don't know? But if you're in the thick of the home buying and the financing process right now as we speak, you may begin to notice that rates have changed slightly if you've gotten pre-approvals from a few months ago. And while yes, the Bank of Canada didn't raise their rates last month, there is the possibility that they could be making some moves in early March of 2022. And to be honest, it's going to come a lot quicker because February is actually a very short month. God, where is the time gone? And while we also generally tend to follow what goes on in the US, they've already started to see increase in mortgage rates at some of their lenders and banks down there with interest rates on some mortgages being as high as 4%. So it doesn't surprise me that the banks here are starting to inch up their rates as well too to sort of stay in lockstep with US lending rates. And so I get this question a lot and I've been getting it a lot lately is should I lock myself into a fixed rate mortgage or should I stay variable? And while I'm not a bank, a lender or an underwriter. I don't work in the mortgage business at all, but I get this question a lot because I'm sort of more knowledgeable than your average agent. So people sort of want to know what my take is. Should they convert to a fixed rate mortgage or should they just go for a variable? And so I'll break down for you roughly how I look at interest rates when it comes to mortgages, how we assess what's going on in the lending markets, and of course, how you can best position yourself so you can save a little bit more money in your piggy bank. But the general idea is if we start seeing very aggressive interest rate hikes, you know, from the Bank of Canada, Canada or the Federal Reserve in the US, you might want to lock into a fixed rate because then it's more certain, right? Essentially, you're paying for certainty so that you know exactly how much you're paying per month. You know exactly how much is going towards your interest and your principal payments because, of course, your monthly mortgage payment is a mix of principal and interest. But then, of course, with a fixed rate mortgage, you have a little bit more certainty, but with more certainty, you're also paying a higher rate as well, too. And generally, people are locking into fixed rate mortgages if they're buying something and they don't plan to move for a long time. So if you've just gotten into a freehold detached house or like a freehold semi that's got enough space, you're going to be there for at least five years. Yeah, you might want to lock in because the problem with fixed rate mortgages is that they're not as flexible, right? So if you plan to move or you're somebody that moves quite often, then you might want to stick to variable because the penalties for breaking that mortgage are much less for a variable rate versus a fixed one. And so generally variable rates are a lot cheaper, right? So the interest rates are lower. It's what people have been going for at least for the last I would say I don't know 10 years and rates and fees definitely depend on your bank or your lender okay but essentially with a fixed rate mortgage you know you're committed you know you're locked in it's like you're married, but then with a variable rate, you have a little bit of flexibility, right? But then your monthly payment in terms of principal and interest, that fluctuates depending on what the rates are with your lender and of course what the rates are with the Bank of Canada. And so with variable rate mortgages, you're completely at the whim of all these Bank of Canada announcements and you're just sort of like waiting pins and needles every time they make an announcement because it's going to affect your mortgage amount every single time they make an announcement. So variable rate mortgages are basically the opposite of set it and forget it. 
it. Fixed rate mortgages are definitely more set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about it for the next four to five years. But then in the past few years when rates were incredibly low and then they got even lower rock bottom record low rates because of the pandemic over the past two years, clearly variable mortgages was the way to go because the Bank of Canada wanted to make sure that rates were going to stay for at least two years to help the economy recover. But now that it feels like the pandemic might be coming to an end, hopefully, finally, it really seems like there is a path for more interest rate increases. And while even before the pandemic, we were seeing interest rates below 3%, you know, they were sort of realistically around 2.5%. But what we're hearing in news outlets and in the general media is that the financial markets in Canada and in the U.S. are factoring in basically five rate hikes for 2022. I've even heard rate hikes as high as seven in one year. But I honestly think that would be a really, really massive shock to the economy, a really huge explosion, catastrophe to the housing market if they were to raise interest rates five or seven times in a year. And some experts are even saying that, you know, we've been focusing so much on inflation and battling inflation that we may end up causing a recession if we raise interest rates too much to a to be honest, I don't know where you guys are at, but I would rather choose inflation over a recession. Am I right? And so although I will admit that rate hikes are definitely in the horizon and it may come in larger shocks than we anticipate because they're trying to deal with the hyperinflation that's going on right now, not just in Canada, but also in the US, it is desperately something that we would really need in the housing market here to sort of shave some of that demand off. You know what I mean? You know, make sure that the people who can actually afford to buy houses are the ones who are buying houses so that we're not seeing 20, 30, 40 offers on one house, maybe 10 or 15 offers is a little bit more manageable. God, I can't believe I'm saying 10 or 15 is manageable. But yeah, those who are on the margins and buying a property with mortgage insurance, you know, those ones who are cobbling together their down payment and, and their monthly income is kind of iffy, take some time, save up a little bit more money. So now the ultimate question remains, how much will they raise interest rates this year? How often, how frequent will they overdo it? And will they rankle the super hot housing market to sort of tame inflation? for the overall economy. We will see, we will definitely find out, and we're definitely going to stay close to that news here at Selling Toronto for you. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow us here on the channel. We'll keep you posted, but no, honestly, we're definitely going to see some rate hikes for sure. And I don't really think it's a bad thing for the housing market. So you can bet your bottom dollar, it's going to cost a bit more to own a home in 2022. But my only hope is that it also counterbalances. So if there's higher interest rate, hopefully it shaves off some of that demand, shaves off some of that crazy bidding activity that we've been seeing. So it'll definitely be an interesting year indeed. And uh, we'll keep you posted here at Selling Toronto. But expect changes to come sooner rather than later, guys. Definitely in the mortgage markets. And of course, if you need personal service, advice, counsel, guidance, then you know who to call. Contact is in the description below it's also at the end of the video don't be shy to hit us up at selling toronto we'd be happy to represent you buying selling whether it's your home or investment properties but we'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching and uh bye for now